Right, so we've set top of foundation. Um, we're going to put a, a strip footing in now, a, a wall that supports this building, and then a, a foundation underneath that. If you just click on your 3D view, um, just on here, just navigate. If you shift and scroll wheel, just click where it says bottom. We want to be the underside of it. And we're going to draw a wall um, along the centre line of the existing wall. So that's the roof overhang, and that's the main wall there. I'm just going to just set this to consistent colours if you like so you can see a bit more what's going on. Now you could do this in a plan view, a, a level naught view, and it'll give you an error saying you can't see what you're drawing because you're drawing it on top of foundation. So you could draw it on top of foundation or whatever, but I'm, we'll just stick with a 3D view for the time being. Um, just click on your wall tool and from here we're going to set what's called a footing, this 300 footing wall. Now there's one thing that Revit does here that I found particularly irritating. It does it with some columns as well. When you select a footing, it instantly gives you a base offset of minus 4,000. So it's saying, right, I know you're going to want to go down with this uh, wall. So we'll go down by, by 4,000. So for instance, if we were drawing normally, and I were clicking here on level 0, you can see it's going down on, underneath the house. Right? So it's automatically put in a 4,000, minus 4,000 base offset. I showed you earlier on how to do a top offset. Um, similarly, there's a base offset and a top offset, but you can imagine how they work. So I'll just select those. We don't want it to have a, a base offset at all. We want it to be constrained. The bottom level, the bottom constraint wants to be top of foundation or top of concrete, and the top constraint wants to be level naught. So I'm just going to go into a 3D view, which is where you, you'll be. And uh, I'm going to wall. I've got 300 foundation foot in. I want the base constraint to be nil. I want the base... Sorry, the base offset to be nil. The base constraint to be top of foundation. And the top constraint to be level naught. And all I'm going to do is, because I've got wall centre line checked, I'm just now going to trace over the centre line of the wall... And then I'll pan down, get to that. It'll snap to the end point. It'll snap there. And it'll snap there. There you go. And then I'm in a 3D view, so I'm just going to orbit round. And I can check in a elevation that that's exactly between the two level markers that we wanted. So yeah, I find that slightly problematic when Revit puts certain default settings in. So keep an eye on that in future. Maybe they've updated that in other releases. I, I don't know. Um, all we're going to do now is put a, a strip of concrete underneath. Uh, that's easy done. Just go to your structure tab. Sl click on, we're going to do a foundation wall. Um, I've expanded that so you can see underneath. That's how it's going to like. It's going to put uh, some concrete underneath. I'll just check where we are on the... Uh, we're on number 67 now on the handout. <clears throat> and we're going to uh, choose a, a wall... What we're going to do is we're going to change the thickness of it. Um, now, the reason I'm doing this is this is how you change, you customise things in Revit. So just click on Edit Type. That's all well and good. And what you'll do is we're going to duplicate the uh, existing family, the existing wall, if you like. So click Duplicate and just call it Strip Footing. Press OK. The reason we called it something else and duplicated it is because then we can make changes to it without ruining, if you like, the one that comes built in with Revit. Um, just change the foundation thickness from 275 to uh, 150. So that when we draw, it'll be 150 deep and okay that. Uh, all we need to do now, really, we've got the... Uh, we're still active in the Place Foundation tab. So if you just hover over a wall tab select it'll put it on for you so that's lined it up with center line that's a 750 wide strip footing probably a bit wide that even so it's a 750 wide strip footing 150 deep um yeah all done in what a couple of clicks um yeah that's it so also when you're working in revit just notice this um, status bar at the bottom when you're in certain tools 
it often gives you, like there it's saying click to enter wall start point, it often gives you a little prompt what to do next and that kind of thing. So don't panic, look down there and see what it's saying, or type a word, or look for help, you know, that kind of thing, or ask your tutor, or watch more YouTube video clips. Um, so that should help you in class. Uh, we're going to do renders and that later on, uh, but you, you've got a r reasonable grasp of how Revit works in terms of levels and editing objects now. In future, usually it's getting doing more complex shapes, stairs, and making it look pretty for people. Book 3 is all about making it look presentable, setting things to scale and stuff like that. You can do, we'll do we will do rendering and make it look nice. Um, I'll show you like it says on point number 73, you should really be reading this hand out as well, but on point number 73, just go to a level naught, um, under view, just click, drop, drop down, click camera, click somewhere away from your building, somewhere the other side, that's given us a perspective view of the building, just uh, expand these if need be. If you want to change that, over here you'll have a uh, navigation wheel, just click that, move it over here. So if I left click and move around on orbit and let go, left click and move around on zoom, left click and move around on pan, you know that kind of thing, I'll close that. Uh, what you can do in your view command you can do what's called a render. So if we shade this realistic, that's um, nothing like what a render looks like. Um, we'll do render here, keep it set as draft, just choose render. You're supposed to, I'll show you later on, you're supposed to change settings for you know the light source and all that kind of stuff. It looks terrible and glitchy because it's not done many samples, we've just got it set to draft quality. We could set it to medium quality and try it again. Rendering takes usually a long time, imagine it full of glass and shiny surfaces and light sources and stuff like that, it's a nightmare. This is when the actual power of your computer gets uh, tested. Rendering is using your computer processor a lot. When you're in Revit moving around things and it's lagging like hell, that's not actually a processor really, that's your graphics card. Uh, so you need a good graphics card and a good processor and of course both cost money. So there you go. So you, there's other settings, but we'll look at rendering in, in other booklets, whatever. It's trying to make it look realistic. Um, there you go. That's the end of book two. Move on to book three. There's a video tutorial for it and a handout. And uh, yeah, fill your boots.